Okay? Hi. Uh, so, this is a continuation of our discussion on Chapter 4. So, last discussion, we uh, stopped at this point. Uh, the infinitely long straight line. We solve the magnetic field at a distance or around a conductor getting a current I using Bios Abart law. So now let's also again solve that one but this time instead of using the Bios Abart law we will be using the Ampere's law. So I just uh, use this side to solve for uh, the magnetic field density using the different method or using Ampere's law instead of using Bs bar law. So according to Ampere's law, if we add all the dot product of the magnetic field density and uh, a magnetic path DL. So D, uh, DL here is not the same as the DL in the Biosabart law. The DL in the Biosabart law is uh, the DL here is the length of the, the conductor. It's the length of the conductor while the DL here in Ampere's law it's different. This is actually the, the mean length of the magnetic path. So in this case if we consider this magnetic path, the path of this DB here. Then it's a circle. It's actually a circle. So if you draw that one, let's try to draw a circle. So if this is the circle, this is the top view of, of this one. The magnetic path with the radius r. So the differential length of this magnetic path is actually, if you get, if we try to solve for this one, if this is a differential length, the direction of the differential length will be at the same direction as the magnetic path. So it's counterclockwise so in that direction. And what will be this DL here? Actually, DL is an arc link. And that arc link, if you know this angle here, this angle, because this is very small, that's very small arc link, then the angle should also be very small, infinity small. So if you want to solve for DL, DL is actually the arc link given the angle and given the radius. The radius is constant. So if you want to solve for DL, uh, DL is equal is just equal to, oh, remember what's an arc link. An arc link S is equal to the radius times the angle, where theta should be in region. So if you want to solve for DL, that DL is actually equal to R times D theta. So if we want to know the vector, including the, the direction, the direction of DL will be the same direction as the magnetic flux density, which is uh, A theta. So if you plot that one into a uh, cylindrical coordinate system, should be in theta direction. It's the same as the direction of our magnetic flux density. So B here, the vector V is actually equal to B, the magnitude B, and the direction is also A theta. And according to Ampere's law, if we take this one, the line integral, it should be equal to mu times N times I. But in this case, this is a straight line, so there's no turns. So we can remove N here, and we just put here mu times I. Because it's just a straight line. So this is uh, Ampere's law. Uh, so we need to take the dot product between these two vectors. So they have the same direction. So what will be A theta dot A theta? So remember, when we, when we are taking the dot product between two vectors, so for example, A dot B. 
So this one, you just take the magnitude A, you multiply it with the magnitude of the other vector, and you multiply it with cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between the, the vectors in a cross product instead of cosine, it's a sine. And this is a scalar product, so the output should be a scalar quantity. So if you take the cross product, uh, that product between a theta and a theta, the angle between them will be zero because they have the same direction and their magnitudes are one, so this will be equal to one times one or this is equal to one. So if we solve now this one, so this will be the integral uh, of b, which is, ah, sorry, the integral of b a theta so that is b here dot dl which is r d theta also in a theta direction and this should be equal to mu times i but a theta dot a theta is equal to 1 so this one will be just equal to b times also r times b times d theta and it should be equal to mu times i and we are integrating so this is d theta so we integrate in a loop so this is a closed integral so we need to integrate it into a loop so uh, what will be our limit because this is d theta so this will be from zero so that's a revolution it's a circle until 2 pi so from zero to 2 pi so if we solve now this one uh, R and B here are constant. These values are constant. So we can uh, put them out from the integral sign. So R, R times B times the integral of D theta equals mu, mu times I from 0 to 2 pi. Take note, use 2 pi not uh, uh, 1 or 360 degrees because remember the formula is for arc length is r times theta where theta is always should be in ray jet the theta so uh, sh this should be from 0 to 2 pi and it's equal to mu times i so what's the integral of d theta it should be theta so the integral here will be theta and the limits are from 0 to 2 pi. So if we solve this one, so we have r times b times theta from 0 to 2 pi equals mu times i. Then upper limit minus lower limit, so rb times 2 pi uh, minus 0 the lower limit equals mu times i or this is 2 pi r b equals mu times i and solving for b b will be equal to mu times i all over dividing both sides by 2 pi r 2 pi R. So this will be the value of the magnitude of our magnetic flux density at this point where the direction is in the theta direction. So if we look at our, our first derivation, this B is equal to mu I over 2 pi R. It's the same as what we have derived here using a different method using Ampere's law instead of Bucevar's law. So conclusion, we can use them both. We can use Ampere's law. We can use Biot-Savar law. But uh, Ampere's law is uh, much limited compared to Biot-Savar law because of the magnetic path that you need to choose. While the Biot-Savar law, you you start from the beginning and you solve it based from the concept. Okay, so that's example number uh, four. So we can go to other examples. So this example now, 
will be much easier easier because we already solved the uh, values for magnetic field density. Here, what is the magnetic field density at 0.5 50 millimeter from a wire carrying a current of 3 amps? So in the problem, it does not state that, that this is an infinitely long wire, the, the, the length of the wire. So we can assume we can assume that this is an infinitely long wire because there's no length given. Uh, the only given is the distance of the point that we want to solve for the magnetic field density to the conductor. And it does not care about the uh, direction of the magnetic field density, but we don't, we, we know the direction. We can use the right hand rule if we know the direction of the current. And this is a straight line. We also assume this is a straight infinite line. This uh, does not have any number of hertz. So we can use the derived formula now instead of going back to the beginning the magnitude of the magnetic field density at that point is equal to mu times i equals 2 pi r oh, so this is a wire carrying a current so we can also assume that this one is in free space this is also in free space because we are talking about wires and current so Usually, our wire and currents are in, we use them in free space, not in water, not in uh, different uh, materials. So, we can assume that one. Then, if we assume that it's in free space, then our relative permeability will be equal to 1. Or, this means that mu is just equal to mu naught. So, our magnetic flux density will be just equal to mu naught times I all over 2 pi r. So I here is the current, r in amps, r is the distance which is in 50 millimeter. Uh, so this one is in uh, millimeter, so we need to convert that one into meter so that we can use MKS system because amp is in MKS. Then, so if we do that, mu naught is equal to 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 then you multiply it with the current. The current is just 3 amps. Then this one is all over 2 pi times r. r is the distance, uh, 50 millimeters. So we need to convert that one into meters. So the answer is 0 0.0, 0 0.05 meter. So if we calculate this one using your calculator, well, we will arrive with the value for the magnetic field density, which is equal to 1.2 times 10 to the negative 5. So the unit here, because we are in MKS, the unit will be in Tesla. So that is the value of the magnetic field density 50 millimeter from an infinitely long wire carrying a 3 amps of current. So you can memorize the formula to solve this one, or you can go back if you forgot the formula. You can still go back use Biot-Savart law or the Ampere's law. So next example, this is uh, a more interesting example. So this one, we have a circular coil of radius r. So it's not a straight line anymore. It's a circular coil. We have a coil. We have an n turns of r in which the current is i. What is the magnetic field in the center of the coil so it says magnetic field so there are two ways to measure magnetic field can be measured through uh, flux density magnetic flux density or through intensity the only difference is you just remove mu so here we can assume that this is the magnetic field density For the problem does not state if this is magnetic uh, field intensity or magnetic field density. So we can use B because the figure says it's B in the center of a coil. And it's also DB. So this automatically B 
the magnetic field density. So, we can now again use uh, Biot-Savart law to solve this one. Again, we need to include n because this, uh, there is a number of terms. So, so, you just multiply n here. It's almost the same. So, the differential magnetic uh, field density at that point at the center according to Biot-Savart law is actually equal to mu so this time this time we need to multiply it with n times the current i then multiply it with the differential length of the conductor it's a vector then we cross that one with the a r so a r is the vector from the point that we want to determine the magnetic field density to the conductor all over 4 pi r squared. So, this is, a, this is our basic formula. This is from the beginning. This is according to uh, law. So, from this, we can derive the formula for the magnetic field density at the center of the circular coil. So, first, what do we need here? And mu given. Uh, first, what is r here? What is this vector r? So, it's easy. Vector r is just equal to what? So, it's going, uh, that vector is going to the left direction. So, if it's in the left direction, we plot this one into rectangular coordinate system. That direction, this is x. This should be y. So, the direction will be in negative y. Or we can also use, uh, let's try to use uh, cylindrical coordinate system. To solve this one so what will be that direction if you cylindrical coordinate system this is a cylinder that direction should be the opposite direction of the radius r it's not the outward direction but it's the inward so it should be negative a r but what's the length what's the magnitude the magnitude is the the radius of the loop and we can call it small r so it will be minus small r a r where r small r is the radius of the loop then next so that's r that's that's only our r we, we don't have any other component for r because it's just going through the center it's inward so it's negative now if we want to solve for a r AR is actually just equal to A small r because it's just the component of vector r. So it's just the same. It's just AR. While the magnitude also of r, magnitude of r, because in, uh, in our formula, this should be the magnitude, is just equal to also to positive r or the radius of the coil. So, what else do we need? We also need dl. What is dl? So, this is a vector. So, what will be our dl here? It's the same as what we did at the first part. Uh, it's a arc link because the wire is circular. This wire is circular. The shape is circular. So, the differential length should be also, so this is a vector equal to, again, the radius of that circular uh, coil, which is R, times the angle D theta. And the direction will be, again, in theta direction. Because we plot this one in a cylindrical coordinate system. The path, if you want to use the, the uh, Ampere's law, the direction of the magnetic field density is different. It's not a theta anymore because it's going upward and downward. It's not the same as before. But the direction of the coil is in a theta direction because we plot it into our cylindrical coordinate system. It's better to do that one than to, uh, to flip, flip the 
the path, magnetic path of the magnetic field density. But if you use Ampere's law, then you can flip this one. You can make the magnetic field density path to be on the x and y plane. So that, that will be a theta. The direction will be a theta. So here now, so that's dl. So what else do we need? We have them all. So we can now solve for db. db will be equal to mu. So these are constant times n times i all over 4 pi and the value of r magnitude is just r. So we square that one. Then we have the cross product of dl and ar. So we have dl is this one, r d theta a theta. So r d theta a theta crossed ar. So our ar is just a small r. A small r. So what's the cross product of a theta and a r? So we look at our drawing. If we say cross product, again, review a cross b is equal to a times b times sine of the angle between them, then we have a certain direction. In this direction, we can use the screwdriver rule to determine the direction of the cross product. And that cross product value, that uh, uh, that vector is always perpendicular be between, in perpendicular between the two vectors, A and B. So, if we take sine theta, so if we want to determine A theta cross A R, so where's A theta, where's uh, A R. So, if we go back here, this will be A, this direction here, you look at the drawing, this is A R. Where A theta is in this direction, it's going counter clockwise A theta. Then we have A Z going upward. This is A Z. So if we cross, we take the cross product between A theta and A R. So imagine we have a screwdriver in that direction. Here, the direction will be from A theta to what will happen to the screwdriver? So if you rotate that one into a uh, clockwise direction. So the direction of the screwdriver will be going downward. So the cross product will be going downward also. And that direction is actually negative A, Z. So this one here. A theta cross AR is actually equal to negative AZ. Or you can review your 126. We already discussed this one in 126 chapter 1 vector analysis. Read them if you want. Then, so that is our value here now. So we can do the integral. So B will be equal to the integral. Uh, we are integrating with respect to theta. So this is d theta. So all other uh, variables are variable, not variables here. So they are all constant. So we can move them out. Mu and i. And we have still r here. We'll cancel out for the r here. Then this one, a theta cross a r is equal to negative a z. So we just put here negative all over 4 pi times r. Cancel yung the other r. Then here we have a z. Then we also have d theta. So we can integrate this one. 
then what will be our limit? Our limit will be because this is a circular coil. So we can use from 0 to 2 pi. So this will be from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, wait. Okay. Then, what's next? Uh, what's the integral of d theta? So, b now here. We can still solve for b will be equal to negative mu n times i all over 4 pi r. Then, the integral of d theta is this theta. And the limit is from 0 to to 2 pi. So the lower limit will be 0, so we can remove that 0. And the direction of this one will be in the z direction. And so the final answer will be b is equal to negative, uh, not yet the final answer, mu 4, uh, mu n, i all over 4 pi r. Then this one will be upper limit 2 pi minus 0 a z. Then we can cancel this one. This 2 pi here and the pi here. Then this one becomes it's 2. So the final now, final answer now for the vector magnetic field density is equal to negative mu n times i all over 2 times r in the z direction. So this will be our magnetic field density at the center of the coil. So it's a negative az. The direction is a negative az. So if you look at the drawing here, it's really negative az. Because if we try to observe the magnetic field at the center, it's going downward. And going downward means negative A Z. So it's correct. But if you want to just solve for the the magnitude, so the magnitude now for the magnetic field density at the center of a coil carrying I current is just equal to mu times the number of turns of that coil times I all over two times R, where R here where R here is the radius of the coil. So this is the radius of the coil. Okay. And the number of turns, I is the current in amps and mu is the permeability. So that is the magnetic field density at the center of a coil. Next. So you can memorize that formula if you encounter that type of problem. Or you can derive it through our derivation here. It's easy to derive them. Uh, next. Here, a different example now. Less math, let's math, less math. A magnetic pole face has a rectangular section having dimensions 200 millimeter by 100 millimeter. With the total flux emerging Emerging from the pole is 150 microweber. Calculate the flux density. So we want to solve for the flux density. This is a direct solution formula. If you know the formula of this one, then it's easy to solve this one. What's the formula for the magnetic field density given the flux and given uh, the dimension? So it's just equal, remember this is a density, it's just the flux per area. So that's just the formula, given flux, given area. So what will be the area? So we can convert them into uh, MKS system. So Weber is in MKS, so phi, phi is just equal to 150 times 10 to the negative 6 micro means times 10 to the negative 
negative 6 river. Well, the area, uh, which is a rectangular section having a dimension 200 by 100, so we just multiply them, but we need to convert them first in uh, meter. So 200 in meter is 0 0.2. 100 in meter is 0 0.1. So if you multiply them, 0.2 times 0.1. So that will be, this will be in square millimeter. Uh, then, if we substitute this one in the formula, B now will be equal to 150 times 10 to the negative 6 all over 0 0.2 times 0 0.1. So, the answer here will be uh, around 7.5 times 10 to the negative 3 or this is milli. So, the unit here, this is... Uh, in MKS, the unit for magnetic field density in MKS is milli Tesla. So I use Tesla here. So the answer is 7.5 milli Tesla. Next, a conductor carries a current of 500 amps at right angles to the magnetic field having a density of 0 0.4 Tesla. Calculate the force per unit length on the conductor what would be the force if the conductor makes an angle of 45 degrees to the magnetic field so we want to solve here is the the force per unit length so we need the formula that incorporates the force the current and the magnetic flux density so and the length. So, our force from the first example, F, first uh, formula, F is equal to B times I times the length L times sine theta. B times I times L times, this is the first formula. But we want to calculate the force per unit length. So we just divide both sides by force per unit. And this will be equal to B times I times sine theta. So the angle between them is right angle. So we substitute at 90 degrees here. And B, our B is 0 0.4. 0 0.4 times the current, which is 500 times sine of 90 degrees. So the force per length now will be equal to, this is uh, around, uh, exactly equal to 200. So the unit here will be, this is an MKS, current, amps, and Tesla. So this will be in Newton per meter. So it should be Newton per meter. So this is the force per length. Then, what happens if we change the angle be between them? Instead of 45 degrees, we use, uh, instead of 90 degrees, uh, 45 degrees. So, if theta is equal to 45 instead of perpendicular, so what will be our force per length? It should be equal to, it's the same uh, Tesla, the same current. The only difference now is we use 45 instead of 90 degrees. So the answer here will be force per length is equal to 141.42 Newton per uh, meter. So what, does, what is our conclusion from here? With the force, if we want to know the maximum force, Maximum force is actually at the perpendicular uh, angle if the length or the current and the magnetic field density is in perpendicular, then that will be the time that the force is the maximum force. Why? Because if you, after 90 degrees, what's next? If you increase this one, it goes down. If you decrease this one, it also goes down. So the maximum will be at 
uh, 90 degrees. Okay, next, another example. At figure 4.12 shows two long parallel wires separated by distance of 180 millimeter. There is a current of 8 amps in wire 1 and a current of 12 amps in wire 2. Find the total magnetic field point at point A and at what point on the line joining the wires is the magnetic field 0. So this is a very interesting example. So we have here two conductors in parallel with a distance of 180 millimeter. And there's a point between them, which is point belt A, and it's 30 millimeter from the 8 amps and 150 millimeter from the 12 amps. Now, the first question is, we need to find the total magnetic field at point A. So how do we determine the total magnetic field? First, we assume that this is an infinite uh, line infinite line straight line straight wire so so that we can solve for uh, the magnetic field density at that point a so the magnetic field density at that point a first we need uh, we can use superposition first we solve for uh, for the 8 amps then later on we solve for the 12, 12, one, 12 amps then we after that, we cannot solve for the total at point A. And to solve for the total, we can look at the direction of the magnetic field later on. So if they have in the same direction, then we can add them. But if it's in opposite direction, then we need to subtract them to get the total magnetic field density. So if we use our right-hand rule, so we can use our right-hand rule now. So, what will be the direction of the magnetic field density at 8 amps? So, the current is going downward. The current is going downward. So, if you remember right-hand rule, so if it's going downward, then our direction for the magnetic field should be in this direction. in that direction that's due to the 8 amps now how about the magnetic field due to oh, i can erase this one it's better to use this trick we can use the circle here that one then the direction will be in that direction. Then we have the other one, this one. Uh, the 12 amps will be Sorry. What? Let's draw this one. Yeah. It's hard to draw. So this will be the magnetic field and the direction will be also in this direction so it will be in that direction so if you look at the the upward uh, top view just look at the top view so this is the first one then we have another one here uh, bigger one This should be okay. 
this should be our point A. So this is point A. This is the 8 amps. And this is the 12 amps. So at the 8 amps, the direction is in this direction. In that direction. While the 12 amps should be in this direction. So, what happens at point A? What's the relationship between the, their directions? So, here it goes there. Here it's, it goes there. So, this means that the direction at point A is actually opposite direction. They are opposite. So, if we solve for the total magnetic field density there, B total, it will be equal to the difference between the two so it's the difference between the two so the b from the 8 minus b from the 12 amps so we can put here magnitude it's a difference if you want to solve for the magnitude now so in order for us to solve b total we need to solve for the individual magnetic field density First, for B8, so B8 is the magnetic field density due to the 8 amps. So, this is just the, the I just take the, the magnitude, then solve them. Uh, also, if you want this one, uh, if you don't want to use this uh, method, you can use our method using... Uh, you can plot this one into um, cylindrical coordinate system. Then you can add them. If you don't know if you add or to subtract. Then you can add them actually using directly our uh, uh, better calculus analysis. Okay, so to solve now for the magnetic field density due to 8 amps. So remember our formula, if this is a straight line and it's in uh, space or free space, so the formula will be mu naught times the current all over for a infinity long uh, wire. So this should be I over 2 per R. I here is I8 and R here is are uh, 8 so we can solve for b8 here mu naught is 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 and the current is 8 amps because we are solving for the first one due to 8 amps and we will divide this one with 2 pi and what's the r what's the distance the distance is actually 30 millimeters. So we need to convert that one into meters. So that will be equal to 0 0.03. Uh, in meters. So B8 now will be equal to, so the answer here is 53.3. The unit, Tesla. Uh, the micro here is not mu, it's micro times 10 to the negative 6. Then for B12, B12, this will be equal, again, the formula is 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7. And you multiply it with the current 12 all over 2 pi r. The r will be 150 millimeter, or this is in meter 0. 15. And to solve this one, B12 now will be equal to 16 micro Tesla. So to solve for the total magnetic field density at point A, it should be equal to the difference of the two. So this will be 53.3 micro Tesla minus 
16 micro Tesla. Right, so the answer here will be 37. So total is 37.3 micro Tesla. Okay, next. Then there's another uh, question after that. And at what point on the line joining the wires is the magnetic field zero? Zero magnetic field. Just like in the field wave also zero. What we do here is if you want to determine the magnetic field because remember the total magnetic field is the difference between the two. So when will this one become zero? If you take the difference, when will it become zero? They become zero. It will become zero when they are equal. So if B8, if B8 is equal to B12, then the total magnetic field at point A, B total becomes zero. Because it's the difference. So that will be our condition. B8 should be equal to B12. Then let's solve them. So this will be mu naught times the current due to 8 amps over 2 pi r8. I just use 8 for the subscript so that it, it will be consistent. Mu naught, it's the same mu naught times i 12 all over 2 pi r12. So we can cancel out mu naught here, cancel out 2 pi here. So what will remain is I8 all over R8. And it should be equal to I12 over R12. So R12 and R8, these are the distance between the zero point field to the conductors. So from here, you can rearrange this one. You can divide uh, R12 cross multiply all over R8. This should be equal to I12 all over I8. Then, we know the currents. The currents are still the same. Uh, it's 8 amps and 12 amps, I8 and I12. So, the ratio between the, the distance should be 12 over 8 where well, this is around uh, 1.5 that's the ratio between the, the distances and we also know that if we add them r8 plus r12 this should be equal to the distance between the conductor which is equal to 150 plus 30 that's 180 mm or in meters that's uh, or in millimeter you can use this millimeter 180 so if you want to solve for uh, what do we want to solve here? The any any either of the two we can solve either of the two. So we can just solve R8. R8 will be equal to 180 minus R12. And we will substitute this one here. From here, we know that R uh, R12 is actually equal to 1.5 times R8. We substitute here, so this will become 180 minus R12, which is 1.5 times R8. Then if we uh, put the arrange this one and solve for R8, R8 now will be equal to 270 divided by 2.5. So this will be 108 millimeters so what does this mean therefore zero field is found at 108 millimeters from uh, the 8 amp work so therefore, that will be the answer. 
or the other way around if you want to subtract 108 180 minus 108 the other one uh, it should be 72 so we can also say that the zero field is at 72 millimeter from the 12 amp wire so okay next mm, next problem This is an easy one. Minimum working flux density of a lifting electromagnet is 1.8 T and the effective area of the whole face is circular in cross section. The total magnetic flux produced is 343 milliweber. Determine the radius of the pole face. So here again, we will use B is equal to we know magnetic flux and the area. And what you want to solve is the radius because this is circular, so we, we want to solve for the area. So B is equal to 1.8 Tesla. So we don't need to convert that one. And 353. So this will be 353 times 10 to the negative 3 because that's in milli. Remember, all over the area. What's the area for a circle? It's a circular cross section. So circle, the area is pi r squared and we need to determine the radius so this will be pi r squared and we can now solve for the radius so the radius now will be equal to the square root of this one 353 times 10 to the negative 3 divided by 8 times pi so the answer will be around 0 0.25 the unit is it should be in, because this is an MKS, it should be in meters. So the radius should be 0 0.25 meters. Next, a coil of 100 turns is worn uniformly over a wooden ring. A, having a mean circumference of 500 millimeter and a uniform cross-sectional area of 500 square millimeter. If the current through the coil is 2 amps, calculate A, the magnetic field strength, the flux density, the flux, and the magnetomotive force. So, let's solve this one, the solution. So, for letter A, we need to solve for the magnetic field strength. So, this is now magnetic field strength instead of magnetic flux density. Letter B is magnetic flux density. So, how do we solve for H? So, this is H. So we have a formula uh, discussed on above. This is a coil. So we need to include N. H is actually equal to MMF divided by I or NI divided by the mean length L. So we know the number of turns. The number of turns is 100. The current passing through it is 2 amps. And the mean length is, uh, is the circumference of the circle because it's a circle. This is equal to 500 millimeter. And we need to convert that one into meters. So it should be equal to 0 0.5 meters. So our magnetic field strength or intensity now will be equal to 400. And what should be the unit? So here, ampere turn per meter. Ampere turn per meter. This is an MKS system. Next, so for letter B, instead of H, we want to determine B, the flux density. Uh, so we can solve for B by using the formula B equals mu times H because we already know H and we can use this one. But mu is not given. But we can assume that this is in free space because this is a coil. <clears throat> so therefore, mu here, mu r will be equal to 1. So the mu here will be just equal to mu naught. So this will be just equal to mu naught times h. Then we know mu naught, we know h. 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 times 400. It's the h. So our magnetic flux density now will be equal to 502.60 
5. And the unit of this one will be in micro Tesla. Okay. You can use other formulas also. Uh, there's There are so many ways in solving this one because we have so many formulas. But I think this is the, the fastest one. So I, use, I choose that one. Next, for letter C. Yeah, I just put letter C here. C, the flux. So how do we solve for flux? It's the formula for flux. B is equal to phi times or all over A. The area. Is area given? Uh, is it given here? Yes, area is given and it's equal to 500 square millimeter. We already solved for B. So we cannot solve for the flux. So the flux now will be equal to B times A. And B is 502.65 times 10 to the negative 6. This is micro. Then we multiply it with the area. The area is 5. Oh wait. 500 square millimeter. We need to convert this one into meters. So the answer will be millimeter squared times 10 to the negative 6 to 500 times 10 to the negative 6. So this is in square meters. So if we simplify this one, the flux will be equal to, the answer is 0 0.2513. And the unit will be times 10 to the negative 6. So this is micro. The unit will be Weber. We are in MKS system. And lastly, for letter D, for letter D, we need to solve for the magnetomotive force. So it's easy to solve this one. It's just equal to N times I. N times I. N is given. It's 100. And I is given also equal to 2. So the magnetomotive force now will be equal to 200. And the unit for this one, this is in MKS again. So the unit is ampere term hi uh, let's move to the next example we have more examples so the next one magnetizing force of so what's the what's this magnetizing force it's amp per meter so what's that amp per meter amp per meter so if you analyze the if you don't know what is the given you can analyze the unit i don't know amp per meter but i know ampere turn per meter ampere turn per meter this is actually what if you look at here this is h so this is h this is equal to magnetic field strength but it does not have turn so what does this mean it's still the same. It's still the magnetic field strength, but it's not a coil. It's a straight line. So you, you don't need to include the number of turns. We can do that one or some book. Don't need to include the turn because turn is actually is not a unit. This is not a unit. Some books uh, omit, omit this one even there's a coil. So you should know that ampere per, per meter is the same ampere turn meter so you can do that so here if we solve this one so magnetizing force is actually the magnetic field strength or magnetic field intensity which is equal to 8000 now it's applied to a circular magnetic circuit of mean diameter 30 centimeter then by passing a current through a coil wound on the circuit if the coil is uniformly wound around the circuit and has 750 turns find the current in the coil so if we want to solve for the current we use the formula for h so what's the formula for h that relates uh, the number of turns the current and the mean length so we go back again at the first this example it's just equal to n times i all over l so this is just n 
i all over n. But we don't have n. Do we have n? Yes, it's given 750 turns. So, so this one is ampere per meter. So, it's still okay to use this one even if there is no term because of some other books uses that one. So, we can do that here. N will be equal to 750. And the current is, that's the unknown, I. Then we divide it with the mean length. What's the mean length? L, the given here is diameter. So the diameter is not the mean length. Why? Because it's a circular uh, magnetic circuit. So the mean length is actually the circumference of that circuit. And if you want to, to solve for the circumference of a circle given the diameter, it's actually equal to pi times the diameter d. And this should be equal to h, which is equal to 8,000. Our d here is 30 centimeters. So we need to convert that one into meters. So 30 centimeter is equal to 0 0.03. So the current now i. So if we solve now for the current i, so I'll just put it here, i. It will be equal to pi d times 8,000. So pi times the diameter, which is 0 0.03. It's 30 centimeter or 0 0.03 meter times 8,000 all over 750 turns. So i now will be equal to 10.05 ups. Next. A long straight non-conducting stream painted with charge of density equal to 40 microcoulomb per meter is pulled along its length at speed of 300 meters per second. What is the magnetic field at a normal distance of 5 millimeter from the moving string? So this is a moving string. So we want to solve for the magnetic field density. So how do you solve for the magnetic field density? So we know that B is, if this is in free space, it should be equal to mu naught times the current all over 2 pi r. We can assume that this one is a, a long infinite line because there's no given length. So we need to solve first for current. What should be the current? The current is not given, but there's another given here. It's the charge density, which is equal to 40 microcoulomb per meter. And also, another one, it's a speed, which is equal to 300 meters per second. So we can solve, how do we solve for the current? So by using the dimension analysis, dimensional analysis, so if we write 40 microcoulomb per meter. So if I multiply this one, we try to multiply this one with 300 meters per second. What will happen? So this will cancel meters and meters. So what will be the unit if I multiply them? The unit will be microcoulomb per second. What is coulomb per second? Coulomb per second is actually ampere. So from here, we already solved for i. This is actually i. If we multiply them, it's i. So if you, even you don't know the formula, if you know the units, then you can solve for the unknowns by, by identifying or by looking at the units of the givens so here this will the current will be equal to if you multiply that one this will be 0 0.012 amps and if you know the current what else uh the normal distance which is equal to five millimeter so if we convert that one into meters so this will be 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 and multiply it with the current 0 0.012 all over 2 pi r. 2 pi the r is 
five millimeter or this is 0 0.005 meter so yeah the magnetic field density now will be equal to 0 point or 4.8 times 10 to the negative 7 and the unit of this one this is an mks it should be tesla next another example here this time uh we have here a bx curve given bx curve so we don't know the uh, permeability of the cord so we can determine the permeability through this one or we can determine the relationship between h and b directly even if you don't know the permeability sometimes permeability is not given and actually it's changing it depends on the level the level of the magnetic field density and h it's not a constant remember mu is not constant we can only approximate them in a certain linear region we can make it constant at a linear region but in actual it's not constant if you look at the curve it's really not constant it's a curve so if we solve this one a silicon iron ring of cross-sectional area 5 square centimeter has a region gap uh, of 2 millimeter cut into it if the mean length of the silicon iron pa is 40 centimeter calculate the magnetomotive force to produce a flux of 0 0.7 milli weber so the permeability of silicon is not given so we, we will be using this curve here the bh curve also take note that the flux in the silicon iron should be the same as the flux and the air gap because we will assume this one because the the air gap is small so we can assume that there's no fringing flux so the flux is the same all throughout so they are just in series so we can say now the solution so this is a silicon ring uh, with an air gap of two millimeters and a mean length of 40 centimeter so let's solve this one so first the flux at the silicon is the same as the flux in the air gap so we we'll just call it flux phi then also because we we disregard the fringing effect the area of the silicon is also the same as the area of the the gap and we just call it a so from here we can say that the magnetic flux density at the silicon as i we can use the formula we know phi phi of the silicon which is equal to phi divided by the area is also equal to a phi all over a so if we solve this one uh phi is given it's 0 0.7 milliweber it's the same all throughout and the area of the silicon iron cross-sectional area is also given 5 square centimeter so the magnetic field density at the silicon iron will be 0 0.7 times 10 to the negative 3 weber all over the area which is equal to 5 square centimeter or this one is uh, 5 times 10 to the negative 4 in square meters so b s i or silicon now will be equal to 1.4 tesla and we will be using this one to determine h because we are solving for the magnetomotive force what will be the formula for the magnetomotive force it will be equal to remember the h is equal to magnetomotive force divided by the mean length so if we know h we can solve for the magnetomotive force so magnetomotive force here will be equal to h times the mean length so what will be h this will be h at the silicon iron si so we can look at this one through the graph 
So if you call this one HSI MMF at the silicon iron, silicon iron, silicon iron. End of uh, it's the same, so uh, it's fine. So here, where's the silicon iron? Uh, this is the graph of the silicon iron. So if we look at 1.4 Tesla, so where's 1.4? This is 1.4 uh, silicon. So this point. This point here is what we need, this intersection here. So if we can approximate this one, it's between 1,000 and 2,000. It's uh, less than 1,500. Should be less than 1,000. Oh, no, it's more than 1,500. So we can approximate this one to be equal to 1,500. Uh, 1, it's more than 1,500. So H now will be equal to, from the graph, HSI now will be equal to 1,000, uh, let's just say 650. It's more than 1,500. And then it will be ampere turn per meters. Then from that, we can now solve for the magnetomotive force, which is equal to that one, 1,650. Just multiply it with the mean length. And the mean length is, uh, it's the value of the mean length, it's 40 centimeter. If we convert that one into meters, it should be 0 0.4. So the magnetomotive force now will be equal to... 600 this is equal to 660 ampere turn so this is only the the magnetomotive force at the silicon and if we want to solve for the total magnetomotive force it's in series so this will be equal to, total will be equal to the magnetomotive force at the silicon plus the magnetomotive force at the air gap or you can also solve for the reluctance if you want to do that. And you multiply it with the flux as another way of solving this one. But we did that one from to the first example. So we can use another approach to solve this type of problems. So next, what is the magnetomotive force on the gap? Uh, so from the air gap, what will be our formula? Remember that phi SI is the same as phi G. The silicon is also the same. The area of the silicon is also the same as the area of the gap. So what about the magnetic field density? So it should also be equal because they have the same phi and the same area. So here, B of the silicon should also be equal to B of the air gap because they have the same flux and the same area so to solve that one now we can directly solve for the H G so remember B G is equal to mu times H G but also this is an air gap so if it's an air gap mu R is equal to 1 so we just put here mu na. so we don't need to use the the curve because we know mu is equal to mu not and this is constant it's not changing air gap does not change so we can solve for hg directly from this formula uh, we know bs uh, i bg that's equal to 1.4 tesla so this is 1.4 tesla so to solve for hg it should be equal to 1.4 divided by mu not which is equal to 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7. So the magnetic field strength now at the air gap is actually equal to 2,228 ampere third. Then to solve for the magnetomotive force at the air gap, it should be equal to 
uh, wait, there's something wrong here. There's something wrong. This should be, it's not 2,228. Uh -huh. so this should be around, what's that? Two. It should be greater than 1 million 114,000. Unit here is ampere per meter. Instead of ampere turn, I use ampere per meter because this is in the air gap. Uh, then for the magnetomotive force, it should be equal to H times L, not 1. 1,114,000 times the L. L will be the, the air gap. So what's the length of the air gap? The length of the air gap is given. 2 millimeters, so we need to convert this one into meters and multiply it by 0 0.002. So, magnetomotive force now at the air gap is uh, this is now 2,200 amps. So, to solve now for the total magnetomotive force, this will be equal to the first one. 660 plus 2,228. So the total now will be equal to this 2,888. So that's the total magnetomotive force in the circuit. Next, we have more examples to go. Uh, we need to finish this first before we stop. A mild steel ring having a cross-sectional area of 600 square millimeter and a mean circumference of 500 millimeter has a coil of 300 turns. Uh, wait. 300 turn. We have more, three more. 300 turns won uniformly around it. Calculate the reluctance of the ring and the current required to produce a flux equal to 800 microwaver in the ring. If the relative permeability is 400, so given the re relative permeability is given, so we assume it's a constant here in the operating region, linear. The solution. So we want to solve first for the reluctance before we do our next. So the reluctance will be equal to the formula for reluctance, the reluctivity times L over area or this uh, mu, no, mu R times area. So L is the magnetic path length, mean length. The circumference is given. This is not the diameter, it's 500 millimeters. So we can directly put here 0 0.5 500 millimeter divided by 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 multiplied by the relative permeability is given it's 400 times the cross-sectional area which is 600 square millimeter or this is 600 times 10 to the negative 6 negative 3 squared so the reluctance will be equal to 1.658 times 10 to the positive 6. And what will be the unit for this reluctance? Uh, there, there, are, there are many units for this one. We can use uh, one of the unit ampere turn per river. Why ampere turn per river? This is in MKS. Next, so after solving the reluctance of the ring, we need to solve the required current. 
So how do you solve for the required current? We can use the formula for the magnetomotive force, which is N times I. But before that, how do we solve for the magnetomotive force? Uh, using Ohm's law of magnetic circuit, the, this one should be equal to the magnetic flux. Multiply it with the reluctance. We already know the reluctance. And the magnetic flux is also given. So we cannot directly solve for the current. So the current now will be equal to phi times the reluctance. Phi is 800 micro Weber. So times 10 to the negative 6. Multiply it with the reluctance which is equal to 1.658 times 10 to the positive 6. And we divide this one with the number of turns n. The number of turns is 3. And red. So the current needed for a 800 micro Weber will be equal to 4.42 amps. So for the next example, you can do this one as your sheet work. Then I will solve the last example here. Then we can now cut this lecture. It's already uh, one and a half R. So you will solve this one again. Solve this one. You can print screen it. Try to solve this one. The answer here uh, is what do you want to solve here? Mm. It's somewhat similar with what we did from the first part. If an air gap of 1 mm is made in the ring, how many extra turns are required to maintain the same flux? So the MMF here, I just give the, the, the answer. The MMF without air gap is equal to 416.65 ampere turn then if we add a 1 millimeter air gap then we need to increase that mf so to increase that mf we need to increase the number of turns and the number of turns additional number of turns and additional will be equal to 1,146 thirds. So without increasing the current, we can still increase the magnetomotive force because of the air gap. So hint, uh, the total uh, magnetomotive force here will be the magnetomotive force at the core plus the air gap, just like what we did with the last example. Then solve for, uh, equate that one into N times I with a constant I, it's the same current as before. Is it given the current? Is it given the current? The current is uh, given. Uh, you can solve for the current. It's not given, but you can solve it from the first part from here. This is N times I. So these are the original N. Original N, but the current will still remain here. So you solve for the current here, then you substitute here, then boom, it's okay. So this will be the answer of that. So last example before we end this one. So solution. A small single phase transformer has a 10.2 watts at a no load. The core has a volume of 750 cubic centimeter. The maximum flux density is 10,000 gauss. And the hysteresis constant of the core core is 5 times 10 to the negative 4 using Steinman's law. 
to find the hysteresis, determine the end current loss. So, our formula for the hysteresis, according to Prof. Stainman, this is equal to K times the frequency times the volume times B max raised to 1.6 all over 10 raised to 7. So, K, uh, do we have K here? K is 0. Point. Hysteresis constant is 5 times 10 to negative 4, 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. times frequency is 60 hertz. This is a single phase transformer. It should be 60 hertz. Uh, volume is given 750 cubic centimeter. B max is given 10,000 gauss, or this one is the same as Maxwell per uh, square centimeter. Then all are given, so we can directly solve for the hysteresis loss. So this will be 0 0.0005, that's the key, times the frequency 60 hertz, times the volume 740 cubic centimeter, that's the formula, which should be in cubic centimeter. So we don't need to convert anything, they are all now in the proper units of our formula. So direct substitution raised to 1.6 all over... 10 raised to 7. So the hysteresis loss is uh, 5.65 watts. But uh, this is not what we want. What we want is the eddy current loss. This is the, the hysteresis loss. So remember that the core loss, the total core loss is actually equal to the eddy current plus the hysteresis loss and it's given that at no load so the power consumed by the transformer is actually the core loss and that's equal to 10.2 so watts so this is equal to 10.2 watts so if you want to solve for the, the eddy current loss the eddy current loss will be equal to 10.2 minus ph which is equal to 5 0.65 watts so the eddy current loss now will be equal to around 4.55 watts so that's the eddy current loss okay so we're done with magnetic circuits so after this one we'll be doing the other half of chapter 4 uh, we will talk about magnetically coupled circuit uh, I will try to increase the phase here. Mm, this formula, then solve, 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 solve. Okay? So, see you at the next video.